Good afternoon, everybody. I have to fumble around in these pockets to get this thing switched on. There, see, it's even better now, isn't it? Uh, it's great to welcome the Riley and the Long family for the baptism this morning, uh, which we're looking forward to. It's a service of morning prayer with baptism. There we go. We'll come back to that actually in a minute. But just a few announcements as we begin our service. And by the way, if any of the children get a bit energetic and want a little bit of running space, shall we say, there's a special corner over in the transept by the organ. Uh, and there is even a little gate so those parents don't go, where are they got to now? I can't say too much because I was like that when I was their age, so I won't say anything against it at all. Now, different things happening. Thank you for those who contributed towards the appeal for Syria and Turkey. Uh, training, child protection, safeguarding training is happening in this parish in the locality on the 23rd of March. Uh, some of us in the parish went on a trip to Dublin. Well, there's actually two more possible trips in the offing. First is on April the 1st. Some of you may remember Ruth Garvey Williams and Andrew Garvey Williams have been in the parish and helped with a mission. Uh, well, they are organizing and have over many years the Amazing Grace Festival. And this year is 250 years since Newton and the hymn Amazing Grace. So there's a special prey being put together, professional prey, that will be performed uh, in Bonkrana on the 1st of April. And maybe a bunch of us would like to go up to it. The other thing is, some of you may remember by faith, a song and the song we have usually during communion, the Lamb of God. Well, those songs are by Keith and Kirsten Getty, and they're doing a big sing in Belfast. So we have provisionally arranged for a coach and that we might take us up there. And also I would suggest we might like to see Titanic if you've not seen it, or even if you have seen it, it's worth seeing it again because they are right next door to each other. So uh, please let me know as soon as possible for either of them. We already have some booked in already. I think that's all for that. So our service is morning prayer. And excuse the color, that actually first bit should be in white, but our bit that we say together is in yellow. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins, and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy, to be praised in glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing spring up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our first hymn is a good Wesleyan hymn, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? If you're following it in the hymn books, I hope I've got the right number. It should be two and eight. Please stand to sing.
collect for this Sunday. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that is, the keeping of your commandments, and we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, in the unity of one God, now, Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon our path. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine in our hearts. Amen. We remain standing as we read together the psalm. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the sheep of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts at Mirabah, on that day at Mesa in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me, and put me to the proof though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, These people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Uh, and please be seated for our next reading. It's actually from the book of Exodus. The first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, beginning at verse 1. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meredith because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We come now to our next song or hymn. I suggest we sit for this one as a form of meditation. Some of you may be familiar with it, some of you not. And let the word speak to us as we come to our next, before our next reading. <laughs>
noticed until just there, but that's written by Keith Getty, one of the people who will, of the husband and wife, who will be leading this sing in Belfast. I hope you're sitting comfortably. Have you seen how long the gospel reading is? Let us begin. John 4, beginning at verse 5. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me? A woman of Samaria. Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flock drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks this of this water will be thirsty again. Whoever drinks the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of, of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty, or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say the place where people must worship is Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what we do, you do not know. We worship what we know, for the salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have done, ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought something to eat. Him something to eat, Jesus said to him, My food is to do the will of him who sent me to complete his work. Do you not say four months more and then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is rece already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life. So the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you do not labor, and others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you've said that we believe. We've heard are for ourselves, and we know this is truly the Saviour of the world. This is the Gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
I pray, Lord, as we come to your word, we would hear and respond to your call and challenge upon our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Those who are regular here will be familiar that in the, the front side of the notice sheet, the non-reading side, you'll notice that I put a picture on the top left-hand side. That is usually related to the gospel reading and the sermon theme. It's no different this week. I've been using a new program to create these logos, and I chose this one in the light of today's passage. As you've noticed, today's passage is quite a long one, so I'm going to call, take what they call a helicopter view overhead of um, what it is saying. And when I was reflecting on this, it seemed to speak to me of the image of a scales, and then I came across this image of justice, similar to the one, if you will, on the top of the Old Bailey in London. You see the woman is blindfolded, that's meant to represent partiality, scales, balance, sword, truth, although we're using that in a slightly different way. So the first thing I want to draw our attention to is seeing or not seeing. Jesus meets this woman, a Samaritan, a Samaritan woman at a well. And I've spoken on this and dwelt on the nature of the two meeting, but I'm just going to touch upon this now. Notice it's midday. It was, sorry ladies, it was usually the woman's job to collect the water. But they did it early in the morning, so it was not too hot. So why then is this woman coming at midday? Because the other women have rejected her, and we'll hear why later. Jesus then rests at the well and talks to her. Remember, this is the Middle Eastern culture. So a man on his own does not talk to a woman on his own, normally. Next, he is a Jew and she is a Samaritan. Men or women are male or female. They don't usually interact. In fact, they don't usually get on. So Jesus has crossed quite a few boundaries at this point. So obviously he would have got her attention because this is far from a normal meeting. And he goes further, he sees her need for water and he draws her attention to his having water, although at first glance, on a superficial glance, how can he have water? He had, she says, you haven't even got a bucket. And then Jesus takes her to see more deeply. And I draw your attention to the sword, which sometimes represents the spirit, as in the sword of truth. And Jesus speaks about the water of everlasting life. And obviously this gets her attention, and this gets her intrigued, and this gets her questioning. And the woman is obviously open to being discussing with Jesus. She hasn't dismissed him, and now open to Jesus taking her deeper. The next thing I like and I love about Jesus is, let me ask you, have any of you ever here done baking with an old fashioned scales? I have seen one, but not used one. You know, the one with the two pans. Let me ask you some few simple questions. How good would the scales be with just one pan? Wouldn't work, would it? How good would it be if they weren't connected? How good would it be if one pan, you know, you got the weights in one hand and you put what you're weighing out on the other side? Well, would it be right if they weren't balanced? And I believe this kind of says something about Jesus. Jesus keeps the compassion because he meets the woman at the well and relates to her where others wouldn't. But now he brings the challenge. And so it, and it talks about, well, go and call your husband. And he, she says, well, I haven't got one. He said, well, actually, you've had five. So Jesus keeps the compassion and the challenge in balance and linked. So it's not compassion without challenge or challenge without compassion. They remain together. And this is probably the prime example of it. But Jesus, Jesus does this on many occasions. And unfortunately, we disciples of Jesus sometimes major on the compassion with no challenge, or all challenge and no compassion. We need to learn from our Lord, Master, and Savior to keep the both. 
Perhaps we need the sword of the spirit of truth to help us to hold them together. So he addresses her challenge and now she can really see much more deeply. How is it that he can know this, he can see this? Unless, and she puts her finger on it, unless, she doesn't quite get it yet, but you are a prophet. So she sees God is either with him or on him. She's beginning to see deeper. And Jesus takes her sight, if you will, he takes off the blindfold to see God, to see God speaking to her, and actually to see God before her. And then they get into discussion about God and salvation. And the Samaritans still to this day worship on a mountain. And the Jews still come before the Wailing Wall, which is the remnant of the temple. And Jesus said, you will worship God neither on a mountain nor in a temple in Jerusalem, but you will worship him as spirit because God is spirit. So the spirit of God, if you will, through Jesus has touched her spirit. And now she is open to receiving the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And also she says about the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. Well, what else is the anointing except the spirit? We're going to come in a minute to the baptism. Do you remember the baptism of Jesus? What descended him as like a dove, the Holy Spirit rested upon him? The anointing. And next the disciples return. And they don't say it, but you can see in the writing here, they're thinking of it. Why is he talking to her at the well? He's a Jew, she's a Samaritan, what's going on? And these are the disciples, the one who supposedly can see, not seeing. And so Jesus takes them on another journey of seeing. And he says, you know the work you're doing? You are working in the ways that others have sowed and you will come to benefit from that. You are sowing that others will continue to work so God can bring us salvation. So he is helping them to see and by the Spirit. And he speaks of the work of the Father is his sustenance. He sustains and his very being is to be and to do the work of the Father. We call ourselves Christians and we're gonna make promises of that in a minute. Uh, that comes actually from a mocking term, or we see them, they are like the Christ. So we are to follow in Christ's ways to do the work of the Father, maybe not as well as Jesus, but in the footsteps of Jesus. We are to be Christ-like. We are to sow, to tend, so that God will reap with us and through us. And now we come to the end, the helicopter's coming into land. And this is the woman who's been rejected by her community, but is so moved by Jesus and the Spirit, can't help but help herself to tell him about this man who told me everything about me. And they're open to her, and they're open to the message, and she brings him to Jesus. And then they come to meet the Jesus and realize God, Messiah, salvation. I pray that especially we're talking about baptism today, we would meet the real Jesus and bring others to come to know him. And indeed, that's the promise that will be made by Godparents to help little Jude to come to know this Jesus, that we can bring others to him. We'll be bringing Jude, if you will, to Jesus. So we may not have the privilege of Jesus physically with us, but we have his word. Some of us hopefully know him and help others to come to know him, to have the sight by the spirit of both compassion and challenge. Jesus the Messiah. I'm going to jump when this thing decides, they're there, so I'm just recapping. Sight, spirit, compassion and challenge. And they remember that they're held together Now I'm just going to touch on briefly the images of the baptism. We have the candle, the light of the world. So we pray that Jude will be light and encouraged in the journey. The cross, Christ claims you for his own. That's how far Christ went for Jude and all of us. And Jesus spoke about water there. And the Psalm spoke about water, Exodus water. It's life 
physical life, we wouldn't get far without it, but spiritual life as well. And so the symbols are there for good reason. I'm going to move us on because we've still got the baptism to come to, but before we come to that, in this time of the year it's Lent and the penance or confessions we move to this midpoint in the service. So we say we do this together. Compassion and forgiveness belong to our God. Though we have rebelled against him, let us renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith and in silent prayer of confession we come before him now. We say this prayer that's on the screen together. O oh God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have broken your commands. We have often been selfish and have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, through Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins, restore you to his image, the praise and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now can I ask parents, godparents, if you could stand, please. This is where, remember the, the, the woman was, took the journey with Jesus. We're asking that you're on that journey with Jesus so that you can accompany Jude on that journey of faith. We present Jude to be baptized. Parents and godparents, will you accept the front responsibilities placed upon you in bringing Jude for baptism and answer on his behalf? By your own prayers and examples, by your teaching and love, will you encourage him in the life and faith of the Christian community? With the help of God, we will. In baptism, this child begins his journey in faith. You speak for him today. Will you care for him and help him to take his place when the life and worship of Christ Church, with the help of God, we will. And this is the confirming of that we're on that journey together. In baptism, God calls us from darkness to his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebel proud rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbor? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Savior? I turn to Christ. Do you come to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ the way, the truth, and the life? I come to Christ. And this is for the whole of us. This little bit should be in yellow for us, all of us. You've heard these are brothers and sisters in Christ. Will you support them this calling? We will support them. And we're coming now to the baptism. And the reason baptism is part of the service on a Sunday morning is we're welcoming Jude into the fellowship and family of the church. And we use the words on the bottom of the screen, we all say together. We therefore receive and welcome you as a member of the, of, with us of the body of Christ, as a child of the one heavenly Father, and as an inheritor of the kingdom of God. Amen. And we don't know why we've got that repeated. That must have been a mistake on my part. So we won't do that again. Uh, we'll now move to the front while we sing this next hymn. And it, during this, there'll be collection will be taken. <laughs>
Can I ask the congregation to remain standing for a moment? Because in a moment, we'll say together our creed. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water to sustain, refresh, and cleanse all life. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved through the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land. In water, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as Messiah, the Christ, to lead us from death of sin to newness of life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ and we share in his resurrection. Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we baptize you and be baptized into his fellowship, those who come to him in faith. Now sanctify this water, that by the power of your Holy Spirit they may be cleansed from sin and born again renewed by your image, that he may walk in the light of faith and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. This is where we, the whole congregation, affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, I need to put this down. Do you want to hold him or shall I hold him? You might notice I have a shell, and you know why I have a shell? The first disciples were fishermen. So this is a reminder of that. So, just need a towel. So we, Jude, William, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> That was a bit of a shock, wasn't it? Mm. There we go. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Live a disciple of Christ. Fight the good fight. Finish the race. Keep the faith. Confess Christ crucified. Reclaim his resurrection. And look for his coming in glory. Amen. God has called you into his church. We therefore receive and welcome you as a member with us of the body of Christ, as a child of one heavenly Father, and as an inheritor of the kingdom of God. Amen. We are the body of Christ by one spirit. We're all baptized into the one body. Let us pursue all that it makes for peace and builds our common life together. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So if you'd like to be seated or kneel for prayer. We pray to the Lord for courage to give up those things which he calls us to do and to return to him the way, the truth, and the life. Give your people, the church, the courage to give up our preoccupations with herself and to give more time to your good news and your mission in the world. We pray, Lord, for your church across the world, and in particular for our own diocese, and for Bishop Andrew, and all our fellow parishes 
and our nearby neighboring churches. May we, like the woman at the well, come and introduce others to you as the savior of the world. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. Give your people, and particularly the people across the world, the courage to give up war, bitterness, or hatred, and to seek peace with each other, within families, communities, nations, and most especially with you. And may the shoulders of the risen Jesus, once scorned by soldiers, bear the burden of political and military conflict in the world. We pray particularly for the people of the Ukraine and nearby Russia, and Moldova, uh, Eritrea, Somalia, uh, and many other parts of the world, and most especially the land of your birth in Israel and Palestine. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. Give us the courage to give up quarrels, strife, and jealousy. We pray for our families, and we thank you that you say, let the little ones come to you, and may they inherit as we may inherit the kingdom of God. May we walk in your right ways, your righteousness, and come to know you more clearly, nearly, and dearly. May we, your people, carry and reflect the light of your presence in word and deed within our neighborhoods and in our communities, both here across the Finn Valley and wider here, wider afield. May the presence of the risen Jesus, his body once broken and made whole, bring peace within us and from us and one another. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. Give us the courage to give up our selfishness and our centeredness on our, only on ourselves. May we live for you and for others and give time, care and comfort to those in need. We are pray especially for those who are ill or facing challenges in mind, body or spirit at this time. We pray for George and Thomas, for Georgina and Robert, for Geoffrey and for Adrian, for Mary Jo, for Pat, and for others who are known to us who need your healing touch. And may the wounded hands of Jesus bring his healing touch by your spirit and through those of us who are with him, and the light of your presence fill homes and rooms. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. Give us the courage to give up our fear of death and to rejoice with those who put their trust and faith in you. We remember those who have passed and who are no longer with us. We give you thanks for them. May the feet of the risen Lord Jesus, once nailed on the cross, walk alongside the dying and the bereaved in their agony and walk with us and all your church to the death and through death to the gate of glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we say together the family prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We are concluding him, well known, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Let's stand to sing.
As the service draws towards close, I have to apologize only our Lord and Savior's perfect. I forgot one thing, little Teddy. Teddy's at home, but Teddy will be winging his way and I'll drop him around to you as soon as I can. Because we have some very good people who knit the teddies and we normally give a teddy, but in my dash to get everything together last night, that just slipped my mind. So I'll give a candle and Teddy will follow. Reason being is Teddy, you see, has to go to a picnic and bring with him his child and the family as we all meet together, usually once a year. And God willing, that will return this year. We haven't been able to do that for a while. God of all grace, who calls you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Now we have one last symbol to do. We've had water. We've had the cross. We now have the candle. Now the trick is to walk down with it without it going out. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and given us a place with the saints in light. Uh, you've received the light of Christ. Walk in the light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our closing words as we go out is the Irish blessing. We'll be marking St. Patrick's Day next Sunday because the rector is up and down the road a lot because the kitchen is not working, so I'm working from Fermanagh at the moment. But we shall conclude with the Irish blessing, which is based on St. Patrick's breastplate. Okay, please be seated. Keep it.
Christ be with you. Christ within you. Christ be Mammy and Cherna Hu, Augusto Goody Shay Hu. The Lord met the light of his face and the goodness of his heart to be breathed upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Niech Cię Pan błogosławi i strzeże. Paka să lumineze fața Lui peste Tine. Jehova, Kosi fuini alafia.